Today we're going to be going over exactly why I started this channel in the first place. It was years of annoyances in the making and I got a leaflet through my door for the Women's Equality Party in Manchester and that is what ticked me off. So here we have their website. Uh, their main front page is here. So I just went into the About Us section to get an overview. Uh, we'll go through this. I have a load of other tabs open as well to try and give more context and understanding into what they're trying to achieve. So let's see if they have anything worth saying or if they just want full-on control and a totalitarian regime. So, uh, the Women's Equality Party is a new collaborative force in British politics, uniting people of all genders, so both genders, ages, backgrounds, ethnicities, beliefs, and experiences in the shared determination to see women enjoy the same rights and opportunities as men, so they're going to be dragging women down, that's a shame, so that all can flourish. Um, this is, of course, worth noting when it says people of all ages, in particular, that they are very pro-abortion, so... If you think of fetuses as people, they don't include them. I know, I know there's a bit of conflict, so it's difficult to support everyone, but that is their stance on it. So, equality for women isn't a women's issue. Um, a bit paradoxical there, but let's keep going. When women fulfil their potential, everyone benefits. Yes, I, I completely agree. I mean, whether or not people wish to do everything that other people think that they should do is another matter entirely and i'm all for freedom and liberty so i don't think people should be forced to do things that maybe they're good at if they're not equality means better politics um sure yeah freedom yep yeah. a more vibrant economy okay sure M maybe i mean i i, I don't think I think that money is a metric of success, and it isn't the only determining factor. A workforce that draws on the talents of the whole population and a society at ease with itself. Okay, well, if you're drawing on the talents of the whole population, then by all means, allow people to do whatever they want to do. Don't force them into things, and don't uh, ban some people from entering because of their sex or gender, and a society is at ease with itself, well, that won't be the case if you're forced to do things that you don't want to do. So, the Women's Equality Party is working towards such a society. So we've already established that they, they want to force people into roles because then they can extract more money from them. It's the same sort of thing as uh, decades ago, before the Equal Pay Act, decades ago, about 46 years ago, I believe, um, it was it was about the same time for the UK and the US, uh, JFK and Margaret Thatcher, I believe. Uh, obviously, she got in <laughs> without it being equal, apparently, so you can work that one out for yourself. Um, yeah, so towards such a society, yes, so you have men working and women not working, so the, the labour force is to choose from men. And then you say, okay, well... Now, everyone's going to be working. It's like, cool. So, of course, the, the businesses and employers are happy with that because now they can double their labor pool and pay less in order to get that, the same outcome because there is a, a greater supply and not an increased demand, which then also means when trying to take care of a family or just the home, that both people need to be working because you can no longer support the family with only one worker. Um, because those wages have, have been cut. So yes, it, it may very well lead to a more productive society, not necessarily one that is at ease with itself though. So we, Women's Equality, are, okay, so Women's Equality Party, I would call them WEEP, because it it really sums up the, the whole whammon approach here. WEEP are pushing for equal representation in politics. And what, what they mean by that is a... Uh, gender split, so 50% male, 50% female. I don't know why they're deciding to choose that as a characteristic. Um, obviously, you could choose to say, oh yeah, and um, sorry, men make up 5% more of the population than, than women, just saying, but we'll, we'll get to that in, in a moment. Um, equal representation in politics. So why don't you pick race or height or hair color or eye color or the size of nose or how fat they are? how many limbs they have, you, you know, why not that? If, if you're going to go with the whole collectivist and group ideology, how fractured are you going to get before you just break it down to the individual level? Uh, in politics, business, industry, and throughout working life. Again, they want to force women into work. 
Weep, expect equal pay for equal work. Good, you've had that for decades and we'll look for ways to tackle the existing imbalances that leave many women, such as those who are unpaid caregivers or in low-paid jobs, especially vulnerable. So in that case, they're going to be taking money from the working people and giving it to the non-working people. Is that is that the idea? So you're going to be taxing people more and it's going to be the men, isn't it? Because as we know, men pay the vast majority more of the tax and women get the vast majority more of the benefits. We are pressing for equal parenting and caregiving, enabling everyone to share opportunity and responsibility in the workplace and at home. That already exists. Here we are. Here is the law. So this is shared parental leave and pay. So to be eligible for shared parental leave and statutory shared parental pay, both parents must follow these criteria. Uh, it is the same. And if both parents want to share the SPL and SHPP, then you and your partner must. So this is the same. It doesn't matter about the gender. If mother's partner wants to take, then the, um, take the paid leave, then the mother must have been doing, uh, mother must have been working and the mother's partner must have been as well, different amounts and vice versa. If the mother wants to take the leave and the partner doesn't, then the roles are reversed. So they don't discriminate if it's maternal or paternal leave. That is the law as it stands. So that has already happened. Good. I mean, this does say it's new, but that's already happened. So we can discount that. Good. Weep urge an education system that creates opportunities for all children and an understanding of why this matters. I, I think it's probably quite obvious as to why this matters. Um, people who have more education tend to be more at, at peace with themselves, depending, of course, on how they are educated and having a better understanding of things normally leads to uh, less, well, at least a less crime. As, as, as we know, the better educated somebody is, the less likely they are to commit crime. That could be because of more opportunities. Fair enough. Uh, so, in, in case we're wondering, okay, so opportunities for all children and understanding for why this matters. So, opportunity for all children at the moment, we have some, we have a few different tabs, all of these for boys and girls' performances as well as university students. So, if we start with this, gender differences in mathematics ac across the performance distribution. I thought we would start with a good degree of equality. So, here we have the United Kingdom just here, which has a very small gap compared to the other countries on the uh, OECD reporting. This is for mathematics, and down here we have science. And again, the United Kingdom. I'm gonna find it again. Here we are, look, it's tiny. It's basically identical. Maybe beaten by Albania. <laughs> That's about it. So, well done, UK basically the same. Cool, so now we'll go to The Independent, a very left-leaning newspaper despite the name. And so this is about the gender gap in university applications at record high from UCAS, which is our uh, university application institution. So a few more students are a third more likely to apply to degree courses than the male peers. And if we scroll down, it does indeed say that. A rise of one percentage point on last year. Uh, and that's the raw numbers for 18-year-olds. And we said that it should be viewed in a light of a 2.5% decline in the number of 18-year-olds in the UK. Uh, show that school leavers are more likely than ever to apply, even with the decreased youthfulness of the degrees and the increased rage in student loans, both in the UK and the US. And if we scroll down a little bit more... So we're saying that it is more popular and draws students of all ages from around the world to the UK. And that is it from this article. And then we go to The Guardian, another left-leaning, and it is saying women outnumber men in almost two-thirds of degree subjects and the gender gap in British universities has almost doubled in size since 2007. Uh, that's just the, the gap. So it's shown it's been increasing for the past, what, at least 12 years. Um, so women outnumbered men in 180 subjects, equal representation in only three. And then we have the raw numbers here, 66,000 instead of 35,000. And Mary Cook, UCAS chief executive, 
which is, she is a female, chief executive, um, said that despite the clear evidence of a growing gender gap, there had been a deafening policy silence on the issue. Goes down into particular courses saying that biggest gap is nursing, women outnumber men nine to one, psychology is the second biggest, and women are also ahead in areas such as history, philosophy, English, law, and biology. Uh, men prefer computer science. It basically comes down to the thing of women prefer people and men prefer things. And here we have, it says, UCAS noted that there were more men in the population than women in general. There should be about 5% more male students than female in each subject. And also the girls are doing better throughout primary, secondary and higher education than boys. Poor white boys are the most disadvantaged group in entry to higher education and the gap is getting bigger. So she's saying, is it now time for the women's movement to take a step aside, essentially, saying that it has now become so normalised that we cannot conceive of needing to take positive action to secure equal education outcomes for boys. So, moving on from that, here we have the numbers of gender of students by domicile in the UK, 2016 through 17. Obviously, there's a bit of lag in the statistics for them to be compiled. So, UK students in the UK is just over a million. Uh, 57.5% are female, 42.5% are male. So this is in university, they outnumber men. And I might be wondering why that is the case, because of course you've got to look at the times before university in order to understand why that is the case. So here we have the Financial Times. And they are still pushing the narrative that most workplaces remain male-friendly environments, but schools may be more girl-friendly. Girls tend to be more self-disciplined. I have highlighted that as it is very important for a bit in a minute. And this is saying also that most classrooms are now female-run. Two out of three teachers were women in 2012. Highest proportions in younger age groups, 97% in early childhood education. And the best line here is saying that boys are just viewed as, uh, it, it does say it here, um, as inadequate girls, uh, essentially. Uh, they get Jordan Peterson on, online with their men's rights movement as well. Um, but yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. They are saying that boys are viewed as girls who are less, less ideal girls. I can't find the quote at the moment. But that is what they get to. Okay, moving on. We have this from theconversation.com. And they're saying, despite being overrepresented overall, this is women, at undergraduate and entry level in academia, women are still underrepresented in STEM science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You should add another M on there for medicine, as we know that women are men in those fields, um, disciplines, and at senior academic levels. The disciplinary culture of STEM favors men who have an uninterrupted focus on research for decades. And we, we have that, of course, in contrast of the quote that I have just highlighted, saying that girls tend to be more self-disciplined, and now the disciplinary culture of STEM favors men. Go work that one out for yourself. It doesn't make these careers attractive to younger men and particularly to younger women who value work-life balance. That seems fine then. So people get to choose what they want to do and do it. Barriers to women getting into and staying in academia. Uh, they have said, <laughs> not surprisingly, a study found younger academic women examined then dismissed leadership careers in higher education. So again, it comes down to choice. So let them choose. Okay. Back to this then. So, we aim to address the ways in which the portrayal of women in the media impedes progress towards equality. Um, I, I would like them to be more specific then, but I'm sure it will coincide with uh, London Underground advertisements being Sharia compliant, as Sadiq Khan has shown with the whole beach body ready debacle. Weep seek an end to violence against women and recognise physical and sexual violence as a public health problem. Yes, I'm, I, I'm all for uh, ending violence against all people, not just women. Um, a, a good example of that is, of course, the Second Amendment in America. I know we do not have a big gun culture in the United Kingdom, but nonetheless, 
in cases in America where a man attempts to rape a woman, he is successful 42% of the time if she does not have a gun, and he is successful <laughs> less than 1% of the time, in fact, 0.05% of the time if she does have a gun. So there's a huge disparity there, and therefore I, I strongly recommend people have the capability to defend themselves as the police take far too long to, to respond. If it is an instantaneous matter, of course, you have a few seconds, and even if the police respond in two or three minutes, that is too long and too late. But in case you're wondering, uh, the violence against women, they do not bring about domestic abuse in particular, but I believe that is what they are getting at, because We have Here we are. headline figures. This is from the Office for National Statistics of the UK. Latest figures from the Crime Survey for England and Wales show little change in the prevalence of domestic abuse in recent years. Uh, 2 million adults aged 16 to 59 years experienced domestic abuse in the last year. 1.3 million women, 695,000 men. So it's about two thirds women and one third men. Women are more likely to use a weapon in order to equal the playing field, and men are less likely to report the crime. But yes, of course, I, I move for ending violence. If you can, I, I don't think you can. But sure, as long as we don't need a huge police state and restraining people all of the time and blunting the ends of knives, as was posited a little while ago for London as well. It's ridiculous seeing as you can even make a, a knife out of aluminium foil <laughs> just cut people with paper paper cuts are painful okay um, moving on from that then oh and in case you're wondering it is far more likely to uh, domestic violence is far more likely in same sex relationships particularly amongst lesbian relationships where they said a third of um, people in a relationship in a lesbian relationship, reported domestic abuse. Um, here we have, and this is it. Here we are. Uh, this is for in same sex relationships. Uh, Thirty-eight point four percent of the questionnaire respondents said they specifically saw themselves as having experienced domestic abuse. Even greater of number of respondents indicated they had experienced at least one form of abusive behaviour from their same-sex partners. So, if you wish to end the prevalence of violence against women in relationships, so domestic abuse, the main perpetrators are women, proportionally speaking, and there are the numbers there. Moving on, nature of violent crime in England and Wales. Uh, do, 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 do. Here we have which groups of people are most likely to be victims of violent crime. We have the CSEW, uh, Crime Survey for England and Wales. Uh, provides good estimates of prevalent for most crime types for domestic violence incidents the self-completion module of the survey is the preferred measure so by sex men were more likely to be victims of violent crime than women 2.3 percent of men compared with 1.2 percent over women so nearly double so why are you focusing on the minority uh, um, uh, victims and not who's getting damaged the most surely if you address the larger issue you can include the smaller issue Stranger violence showed the largest difference in victimization between men and women, 1.4% compared with 0.4% respectively. So if you're feeling unsafe at night, I hope those statistics help you out. 0.8% of men and 0.6% of women experienced acquaintance violence. Uh, however, it does say with the domestic abuse derived from the self-completion module of the CSEW showed that women were more likely to be victims of this kind of violence than men. There is a significant difference between women and men. 7.9% of women were victims in the last year compared with 4.2% of men even though it does say, of course, that uh, men more likely to be victims was true for all types of violence, with the exception of domestic violence, which showed no significant difference from the Crime Survey for England and Wales. Also, uh, females are 
or the in in terms of being a, a victim of a violent crime, females are most likely to not receive injury, and men are most likely to be injured. And this does include with homicide as well. So it's into most likely to be victims of, of violent crime by age, and it says it was down here. Okay, I will leave that for now because finally we have the nature of violent crimes. In case you're wondering, because I thought this was quite interesting that the number of firearm offences, and this isn't just having one, this is if it's being discharged or used just as a blunt instrument as well. Here we are. Offences involving firearms encompass any notable offence recorded by the police where a firearm has been fired, used as a blunt instrument, or been used as a threat. Firearm possession offences, where a firearm has not been used in the course of another offence, are not included in the analysis. And they were used in approximately 0.2% of all police recorded offences, excluding fraud. Which is okay. So six thousand five hundred twenty-one offences were recorded in the year ending March twenty eighteen, which is quite high considering they're illegal. So how do people have them in the first place? <gasps> Almost as if criminals don't follow the law. Fantastic. I thought that was quite interesting, and just to see that there are ways around it as well. We have uh, police recorded offences involving a knife or sharp instrument. And the past four years have seen a rise in the number of recorded offences involving a knife or a sharp instrument. Um, that goes by 17% compared with the previous year to 40,469 offences. And of these offences, 47% were for assault with injury or assault with intent to cause serious harm. 43% were used in a robbery. Which <laughs> is a bit of a tangent, but I thought worth addressing here as well. Just let people defend themselves. Okay. So, we are proud to focus on equality for women and also understand that there are many forms of inequality. Well, we've established how it favours women. We will ensure our party and policies are informed by the views and experiences of those doubly or trebly disadvantaged. So, <laughs> so disadvantaged. So, men, the white men, especially in education, and straight white men, if we're going into quotas as well, uh, by their gender and by other factors such as ethnicity, age, or disability. Young men. Young white men, most likely, to be victims of violence. Okay. It's not what you mean, though, is it? Weep will bring about a change by winning support, votes, and seats. Yes, fair enough. Same as everyone. At least you respect the democratic process. Weep do not try to present ourselves as a party with an answer on every issue and a full palette of policies and will never take a party line on issues outside our remit to bring about equality for women. You're going to have to be more specific because all you've said so far is it seems as if you want women to do... Okay, well, let's see then. So... Equal pay for equal work. Yes, that exists. Um, and for pro parenting and caregiving, yes, already exists. Urgent education system creates opportunities for all children, understanding why this matters. So you want to drag women down for that. And violence against women. So you want increased violence against women then to create equality. Fantastic. <laughs> it's very aggressive towards women. Don't weep along. Weep are, fo are a focused mainstream party, of course, because you can't get human rights or, God forbid, men's rights to be a mainstream issue. And Weep will not stop until all other mainstream parties embrace and adopt our agenda of equality, so-called equality, so equity, and take action to achieve it. Right. So, I, I, I will get into more of this in later videos, but they do ditch the democratic facade later on, and in fact, go as far to say that instead of the government serving the people, the people should serve the government, and the government will initiate change and make you do things instead of protect you. But that's it for this video. So, do tell me if you think I'm reading too much into this, if I'm wrong, if they do have some good points and I've completely missed them, or if they are just bigots and full of hate. So, leave a like, comment and subscribe, share the video around, and I will see you next time.